Okay. Hey, Brittany. So Hi. I am here with Brad Beal, the president of AMS Galaxy USA, and our farmer on this wonderful farm we've looked at all day. He went to Penn State with a degree a degree, excuse me, in mechanical engineering, and he's going to be talking to us about calf care. So without further ado, here's Brad. Thanks for having me back. Great to be with you. So um, yeah, I'm going to give you a little overview of our calf facility and kind of what it looks like to be a calf at Cornerview Farm for the first um, 70 days of life. So that actually starts down on the far end of this barn. On the far end, there are uh, six individual hutches. And um, so the calves are moved immediately to the individual hutch after birth. And during the first couple of hours of life, there's a couple of things that happen. The first is a one gallon colostrum treatment. And uh, that treatment allows the calf to get its immunity. And so unlike human beings, calves do not automatically transfer immunity from their, uh, from their mother. The calf has to get its immunity from uh, a colostrum treatment. We also give them a vaccination. We dip their navel. And, and then shortly after, we will shave the, uh, the tops of their heads off and put a dehorning paste on. So um, the calves will keep each other safe. Um, we'll keep workers on our farm safe and, and just have them not have horns for their life here. Um, so the calves spend um, three to seven days in these individual hutches, and we call that the backgrounding period. And that's where we're um, kind of getting the calves boosted. Um, we make sure they get over their immunity um, hurdle. And as soon as they're looking perky and they're drinking fast and um, we make a determination that they're ready to move and transition to their group housing, they move to one of two group pens. And uh, as you can see, this is the first group pen where the video is looking at. Um, you know, I, I will make just a really short note as we've had lots of students come through here. There's been students in every group that, that feed calves that work at a dairy. One of my favorite parts is when you walk up to this calf facility, whether it doesn't matter what hour of the day or what day of the week, you don't hear any calves crying. You don't hear any calves that are discontent. There's no bawling going on. And that's actually the opposite of what happens at a traditional calf facility because those calves are assimilating a person with getting fed. And the reason the calves are not making noise is because their needs are being met 24 hours a day, seven days a week in the automated feeder. So it's really kind of cool. And I just, I love how quiet and peaceful it are. They're, they're just hanging out, they're laying, um, they're sunning themselves. Some have put their feet up on the wall. And, um, you know, our goal is to provide a very comfortable environment for them and meet all their needs round the clock. So, um, as they move to the to the group pen, the calves get outfitted with a collar, and that collar um, holds an RFID uh, transponder, which is in that little clip on the right side. And uh, so that transponder is what allows the computer to identify the calf and give the calf permission to drink. So in this stall right here, you can actually see there's a calf drinking right now. There's a little dis there's a little display on the screen that actually has a countdown that's showing how much she has left to drink in this visit. I can also see that information right from my smartphone um, or right from the touch screen that shows which calf is in the stall and how much she's consuming. If we wow. come around to the back side of, I'm going to call it the back end, you can get a small sneak peek of what's happening. So underneath this cover, there is, um, this is the line that's actually going to the nipple and there's a valve. This valve is the valve that controls and gives the calf the permission to actually drink from the mixing bowl. So, so it's not a free for all. Calves can't just come drink whenever they want. We are controlling the amount of milk that they're able to drink. And we're controlling how, how long and how much for each visit. In addition to that, right underneath the valve that will 
restrict access or allow access, there's a flow meter. And this flow meter does two things. It actually calculates how many um, milliliters of milk are being fed at any given time, but it also monitors speed. And the speed at which the calf is drinking allows her to get health points. And all of those health points get compiled into a scoring system, which goes all the way down to the basic red, orange, and uh, green for healthy calves to let us manage that way. So she's in here drinking right now. If if I pull it out slow enough and you bring the camera in the top, you can actually see, oh, now she just backed out, but you can see her drinking oh at goodness. the nipple through the stall. And again, she, this is completely unprompted and, <laughs> you know, she's, Very calm. she's just in there and, and She's doing taking care thing? of herself. Yeah, doing her thing. Absolutely. How often can so, a calf come in to eat every day? That's a great question. So um, we, I, I talk a little bit about how you know I learned how to feed calves as a a young boy, and we had two hutches here on this farm, and my grandmother, you know, would help me mix the bottle, and we would feed every calf one two quart bottle in the morning. And then we'd come back in the afternoon and we'd feed another two quart bottle. And so I try to compare and contrast that to what's happening today. So these calves are actually able to, we, the, there's a feed curve that changes based on days of life. And at the peak of days of life, these calves can drink 12 quarts in a day. So not just four, but they can peak at 12, so we we ramp them in, we take them up to a peak, and then by the time they're weaned um, at the 60 day of life mark, we've actually taken them back down. And the last 10 days every day, they're getting less milk and less milk and less milk. And as they're getting less, their intake of their starter pellet is going up. And there's a beautiful thing that happens. Calves are weaned on this farm and we never hear them cry or bawl because they actually don't even know that it happened. Um, so there's just some really cool things that happen with that technology. Yeah. So, so the- so As they get the older, you change that, you change what they're eating and that's because they, their dietary needs change, correct? So correct. your automatic feeder is able to help you make that happen very seamlessly, which is pretty cool. Yes, yeah. And that is where, you know, we talk a little bit about the industry professionals that are out there helping us to make these changes. So uh, we'll navigate into the utility room where the equipment is, but this is just the equipment and the equipment is only as good as the farmer or the professional that is putting the information and data in there to allow the calves to drink. So, um, you know, there's, this is what our feed table looks like right now. Um, so there's an ad lib period and then there's a period where they hit that 12 quarts and then you can see the weaning period down at the end. All of that data and the amount of milk, the amount of milk replacer that we're desiring the calf to drink and then what they actually drink, that is all managed through consultants. And, you know, every state, every, every state and has, and every, large company that's providing products has support specialists and corner Bee farm utilizes them to develop these these nutritional tables to balance what we're feeding whole milk with the milk replacer that's then blended together into the mixing bowl to to provide that correct dry matter um, the correct ration for each calf and the feeder can change that ration throughout the calf's life as well. So if we want to feed higher dry matter or lower dry matters for different days in life, we can do wow. medicine, electrolyte supplements and everything can be combined together. So, but all of that takes, takes management. Our philosophy here is to try to keep it as simple as possible. We try not to make a lot of changes. And then we, we rely on the feedback from the touchscreen to make management decisions. Wow. So. That's really cool that it can be so specific to each calf throughout their life every day. And it just, it knows it all because they've got that tag in their ear and it, and you tell it what you want it to do. And then it just does it. I, I just think that's really cool yeah. that you're able to provide such a specific, unique experience for every calf, no matter where they're at in their life. Yeah. 
Yep. The goal is to meet their needs and grow them as quickly as possible. So when we talk about feeding 12 quarts in a day, you know, it, it's not about feeding 12 quarts. Really, our goal is to try to produce a healthy calf in the shortest number, number of days possible to get them to a weaning weight. And that's ultimately part of the goal to get them to a breeding weight as fast as possible, mm -hmm. because ultimately this farm is in existence to produce a cow that produces milk. Sure. So, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Uh, and I mean, they they don't seem upset at all. They're happy with what they're getting. They are very calm, content calves. So, <laughs> sounds like it's definitely working for you all. So, yep. I think you had mentioned seventy days, correct? That they're on that calf feeder. Um, it, is that it, right? It, yeah. So, um, they're seventy day. They're sixty five days actually being fed the automated ration. And then the 70 days will be if we, if they're in the individual hutches for an average of five days, that's kind of, that's where that, that all works out to. And, you know, and keep in mind the last, um, the last 10 days, they're getting very little milk. It's getting less and less every day. And they're in taking this, this starter pellet. Ah, that's the um, okay. Yeah, that's the pellet we were talking about. And that's free choice. There's as much of that out as possible. And we're happy for them to take on more at any, any part of their life. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, at that kind of 70 day mark, the touchscreen gives us a, a notification in purple that they're ready to be weaned. And then we move them into the next pen and they just keep on graduating through their life here at Corner View Farm. Yeah. So the feed that's in front of these guys looks a little bit different than that pellet feed. What? How old are, are these ladies that they get this feed? Well, they are, um, you know, they, they they start at 70 days and they're probably there for about 20, 20 days in these pens. It's just depending on when we move them. Okay. Um, so they are they are given the feed that the feed that you see in front of them is the uh, the TMR that they get when they move to their next group. So that is in the bottom of the trough. And then we top dress this feed trough with that pellet twice a day. So they, it helps them to transition to their first, their first TMR. Gotcha. So you're putting a little so. bit of a sweet treat on top of the, the stuff that's like the good veggies that they need as they get yeah. to be an adult and, and get older. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we're, and we're trying to transition that as quick as possible because the the packed protein pellet is uh that's a purchase product it's very expensive the tmr that you see in the other trough is it is a mix of on-farm blend and so you know at the end of the day our goal is to try to get them to the on-farm blend as soon as possible to minimize our raising costs sure yeah that makes sense Brad, so these calves, obviously, it's a very important part of the farm to make sure your calves are happy and healthy and, and having a really great start on their farm. Is this something that you as the as the farmer is managing? Do you have, is there, is this another job on the farm that you have a calf manager managing it? Or what does that look like career wise? Um, well, as you found out today, our farm is unique. And um, the, the, the roles here are quite different than probably um, a family farm that might exist if there was an AMS Galaxy operating out of this facility. So yeah. I would say the, you know, in, in a typical case, the farmer would be the one who would be interacting and setting up the feed tables. Um, at our facility here, just the, the reality of what's happening here, we we've certainly do trials from time to time and test out different things, but once we have a system that works, mm -hmm. and right now we are feeding a majority of pasteurized whole milk in the automated feeder, we have feed tables that are pretty much set. So these calves are managed by part-time employees primarily, um, and you know so the part-time employees are doing the moving of the calves, the transition. They know how to look at the touch screen and um, look at the alerts and look at calves that maybe need to be pushed to the feeder if they haven't drank for a certain amount of time. And you know those, those part-time employees typically are coming from our local high schools. Um, and you know, so they're, they're young men and women from 14 to um, whatever. And, and so what I think, you know, you mentioned that the calf raising program is such a critical and important part of it. 
And, and so many times I think our family farms are letting the kids take care of the calves and sometimes that gets our dairies into trouble. Um, I feel very comfortable allowing less experienced part-time employees take care of calves here because we always have the visibility to where the to where the issues and the problems are. And when there's a calf that shows in, up in red that needs attention, I can see it from my phone or the employee can alert our herd manager and we will you know, move to get that calf the treatment it needs to get her healthy sure. again. Yeah, so. absolutely. No, that, that is awesome. I, you guys definitely are, I would say, very fortunate, but what a cool opportunity <laughs> to get to see all this happen. Um, and I would say be a model for, for future farms, for sure. I mean, this is, you know, plenty of farms have pieces of what you guys have. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's really neat to see it all work together um, and just see really happy, healthy cows on your farm. So thank you for sharing all of that with us. I appreciate it. You are welcome. So awesome. I think that's all I have. All right. That sounds good. Thank you, Brad. That was, it's been Thank really you. great getting to see your farm. And I know we've gotten glimpses of the fields in the background. Your farm just looks absolutely beautiful um, and clearly very well managed and you've got a great team. So thank you for your time today. Um, we had a lot of fun learning about all these different careers and how your farm works. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All righty.